Did you know that when disposable diapers were first invented, they were wildly unpopular? But after some genius marketing and a lucrative partnership with a famous pediatrician, they are now the, quote, standard in most industrialized societies. So what did parents do before diapers became the cultural norm? Find out in today's episode. This is episode 265, Diapers Are Not Full-Time Toilets. Hey everyone, thanks for joining me here on the Go Diaper Free podcast. I am Nicole Cheever, and this is episode 265, Diapers Are Not Full-Time Toilets. This is an article we have on our blog that I wanted to bring to the podcast. When you're done listening, please head over to godiaperfree.com slash 265. You can find the show notes over there, everything that I talk about linked, as well as the comment section. We would love to hear your questions and your comments. This is part of our series on EC for new parents parents and really anyone who's first delving into the topic of elimination communication. So without further ado, this is Make a Paradigm Shift. Diapers are a backup, not full-time toilets. There's a graphic at the very beginning of the article that says, when doing EC, the diaper is no longer a toilet. The diaper becomes a, quote, backup. It is now simply a useful tool for the first year of baby's life. Primitive, quote, diapering methods often involved placing soft absorbent materials under baby's bottom inside the sling or papoose. Their purpose was to add extra protection during times of cold weather, travel, and busyness. Their purpose was not to serve as a full-time toilet. Those early humans who did not need a, quote, backup for their babies, i.e. lived in a settlement, not as nomadic, and in warmer climates, simply carried baby around naked inside the sling when pre-mobile, and when they received a signal from baby that they were uncomfortable, they pottied baby through a point-and-shoot method, aiming them into the bush to relieve themselves hygienically. The preference for hygiene is a deep survival instinct that all of us humans possess. Then baby returned happily to the sling. When babies were of crawling age, they were simply toilet independent in that they would crawl to the space that all the other humans relieved themselves, pee or poo, and then return to what they were doing. More than half the world's babies in current times are still toilet independent by 12 months old by the very same methods above, which we humans have used for all of human history. Cloth diapers became commercially available about 200 years ago. Their purpose was to add extra protection until the baby was able to crawl to the chamber pot or outdoors to relieve herself, and at the most, until the baby was able to walk, which is when all babies were completely trained to use the toilet. Their purpose in the beginning, prior to the 1960s, was not to serve as a full-time toilet, but rather to protect the home environment until mobility allowed the child to be trained. And there's a photo here. One manual in the 1950s noted that any poop catch before the child was walking was bonus points. Here's a pic of how it was to catch such a pre-walking potty-tunity. Disposable diapers hit the market in 1961. Mothers hated them. There was no way they were going to put paper on their baby's precious bottoms. The diaper companies then began shifting cultural and social belief systems around delaying potty training to protect your child from harm. After doing so successfully, the diaper, from 1961 onward, morphed into a full-time wearable toilet. Parents were taught by pediatricians to ignore their child's interest in the toilet, cast aside the developmentally appropriate tradition of training before or upon walking, and to train their children into diapers, not the toilet, as has been done for all of human history. In the 1960s, the diaper became the baby's primary toilet even cloth diapers. You see, diapers were always meant to be backups, a tool to be used until mobility and or the mother was tired of hanging diapers to dry. Toilet trained by nine months old, extremely common in the 1950s and also common in current day countries where there aren't disposable diapers or their company's exquisite marketing. Delayed toilet training is a social trend, not a medical necessity, and certainly not in the best interest of baby's health or hygiene. And now I'd love to hear from you. So now is when we would love for you to head to the comment section, godiaperfree.com slash 265, and answer the following prompt. What do you believe about diapers? And have you ever truly questioned that belief? where it originated, and why you stuck with it. We'd love to hear from you. Thanks so much for tuning in today. Stay tuned next week. We're going to continue our series on EC for new parents, and we will see you then.